thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Barry Erickson and, and I'm Community Engagement Coordinator here at Wheaton Public Library. Tonight, we are delighted to bring you this art demonstration of inspired acrylics in partnership with the DuPage Art League. Founded over 60 years ago, the DuPage Art League is dedicated to promoting and encouraging the visual arts through classes, workshops, gallery exhibits, and public programs such as this one. We are grateful to the Art League for arranging tonight's presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn the, the, the camera or the screen over to Sandy Winter. Thank you, Barry. Hello, I am Sandy Winter, Vice President of Activities of the DuPage Art League, and thank you for joining us for this month's presentation. As Barry said, if you're watching from outside of the Chicagoland area, just let us know where you're located by putting a message in the chat. This month, we are hosting artist Kwame Fwama Menza Abrampa, who was born in the Shanti region of Ghana and inspired greatly by the strong women in his life. Through his art, he tries to mimic what is already present in nature, and his work is easily identifiable through his style and the subject that he paints. Please welcome our artist tonight. So tonight, so tonight I'm going to paint something on warrior from Ashanti tribe from Ghana. So I'll, you will know where, like how I start from beginning to the end in two hours. We'll be able to uh, finish something in two hours. So I start with my background and I use a lot of colors because I, I paint what I feel and I love using different colors to get whatever that is in my mind that I want to express. And I use big brush because it gives me a certain texture that I always want to. Yeah, this is the this is the background that I do before I start the, the painting itself. So this is just the background, and after the background, and then I do my sketch, and then I bring the work out.
So after the background, you have to step out and then to see if whatever is going on there is something that you like. Mm -hmm. Then if it is not what you like, you keep on working on it until you, you, you'll be satisfied with whatever you see there. So this is the first stage. Whenever I'm working on a piece, I do my background first. I leave it for a day for the background to dry so that you'll be able to work on the next day. So the first stage of my painting is done. So in case of any question. When you're going from one color to another color, do you actually see, uh, are you just wiping the brush off or using a new brush or what are you no. using it on? Okay. I use one brush because I work with different colors. So instead of you know, sometimes if you work with different colors, it gives you the flair to do whatever you want or do whatever you 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 do. It will still get you you will still get it right because I have shades of blues, I have shades of greens, I have shades of every color. That is how I work, so that I don't need to wipe my brush to pick another color because I have it in shades. Have your paints all lined up there. Do you sign them the same every time, no matter what you're painting? Yes, every time. Yes. Okay. And do you ever paint to music, or do you paint in a quiet room? Mostly quiet room. Yeah, mostly, mostly I have whatever I want to do before you come to your studio to paint. You know whatever you are going to paint in mind. You have the basic. If it like the warrior that I'm talking about, I have a, a picture of it in my mind. That is what I'm going to do. So this is how I want my background to be. And then... Okay, so if you can tell us what the next step is. Because we have two hours uh, to complete the work, 
I decided to come with a, a plain background so that you see from beginning. And then I have uh, ba this background ready that we are going to draw uh, the, the work on and then paint the first coat. And then I have another work that is almost done, like the first coat is done. So I will do the, the finishing touches so that at the end of the day, you know from the beginning to the end. So I will sketch the, the work that I'm going to do on the background, and then I start painting.
Kwame, can you tell us a little bit about your thought process or about um, what, what you're thinking about as you're adding the figures? Okay, now I'm working on the, the head of the warrior. Uh, because mostly it is something that I know, something that I, I saw it myself from my country. So when I'm working on, uh, it is easier for me because I have everything in, in me already. There are three men, uh, the war leaders. There are three men, uh, and this is their faces, and I'm working on the body, uh, the clothes that they are wearing. So that is what I'm working on now.
does your idea change as you're doing it or is it pretty set right from the beginning? Yeah, it, it, it can change because mostly when you are working on a piece, uh, sometimes you go back and you look at it and you can adjust a lot before, before the work will be complete. Yes. So the idea can change, but the concept like the, the, the thing that I'm working on will not change. Any other questions from our in-person audience while well, I've got the mic here? What do you prefer to use as a paintbrush? Are you using flats or ones that are round or just whatever moves? You? Come again. What type of brush are you using to paint? Is it a flat brush or yes. a round one? Yes, when I'm, when I'm doing the, uh, the first coat, I used flat. Mm. The hard, hard one, the shading brush that I, what I, what I use when I'm doing the first coat. And then when I'm doing the detail, I use the soft brush. When I'm working on a piece, I try my best not to mix the paint so much because sometimes you mix the paint so much and the, the life of the paint disappears. So mostly you can see from most of my work that I use the paint as it is. I don't normally mix the paint so much so that you can still feel the, the color. If it is red, if it is yellow, whatever color, I try to put it there as it is. So you're using left hand. So you've always been left handed? Yes, please. Well, some can be with hands. I am a left hand. Yes. Now about the men, do, do the men um, have a story in your mind about where they were going or yes, how they're dressed? But yeah, it's it's a traditional piece. Like Can expand on that, please. Yeah. It's a traditional in Ghana, where I come from, the Ashanti tribe. Uh, they were they they were fighting a lot. You know, olden days you have to fight for. Your, your, your space. So these warriors are the people who stood up to fight for the Ashanti tribe. Yes. So yeah. those are the ones that I'm, I'm painting on now.
I mean, someone at home is asking, are uh, those weapons, their weapons are, is that part of the design? Yeah, it was, a, it's a traditional weapon. It is not like a gun. It's a traditional weapon that they were using at that time. But at that time, they were not having a gun. So that was what they were using to fight. So the first code, the undercoat is done. So this is the this is how I I do my painting. Uh, when I'm doing the first code, this is how I do it. And then I will leave it for another day or two, depend on sometimes how you feel. So when I when I come back again, it means I'm going to do the finishing of the piece. Great. Someone is also asking about other themes uh, that you use in your work. And I don't know whether you'd rather talk about some of the other paintings that you brought now or whether you'd rather wait until you do the third part of the painting. Okay. I think because of our time, I want to do the third part, maybe the, the, the final part. And then after that one, I will talk about the ways that I came with and if you have any questions. So. Sounds good. Thank you. Were these weapons spears or arrows or what? Yeah, arrows. Arrows. What year would this represent? Come again? What year would this represent? So, yeah, when did this take place? Oh, that was like 15th century. Yes, oh, wow. way back. Long uh, time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, because now uh, we don't fight anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So this is the, the final stage of the painting of mostly my works. This is when I'm going to do the, the finishing, putting more light on where it's supposed to, and then put some dark. Yes. Someone's asking, uh, do you change the water during the painting process? Uh, and, or is the the water with the paint in it, the dirty water, helpful to have the color. Yes, I don't I don't change the water until the work is done. Because mostly, as I said, mostly I don't mix the color so much when I'm working on. So you don't need to. Mostly when when you when you mix the color so much, then the water becomes more dirtier. So that one, maybe you can change it, but I don't mix the color so much. I just 
pick it from the bottle and then I use it mostly. And a couple of people are commenting about the, the beautiful intensity of the color. And someone asks, um, how do you get the, the glow in the painting? Um, is, it, is it the type of, of paint that you use or? It is, it is not the paint. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. And, you know, doing something for so long, uh, automatically things, things happen. Uh, because doing one thing for for that long, automatically you you, you become you will know how to go about it all the time. So basically, that is what, that is what I would say. Because I'm doing it every day. I paint almost every day. So you become used to the color. You become used to how to go about it, and at the end of the day, you get the results that you want. And is there a particular uh, brand of paint that you tend to use? I use I use a lot because you know here in the country that if you go to the stores, even if you pick let's say ochre yellow ochre, if you go to pick yellow ochre from ultra, and you pick yellow ochre from let's say black the black paint or or or, or golden, the 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 ochres like. It has a different, a little bit different from. So I pick, I pick randomly from. If I see it and I like it, then I pick it. So I don't necessarily decide on particular brand, but I use any color that appears nice to me. And uh, can you remind us when you started painting? How old were you? I was I was fifteen when I started using paint to paint. Great, thank you. I think that's all of our questions for now. If you want to go ahead and get started on that third third part. So when I'm doing the finishing, I use soft brush so that at least the, uh, the soft brush will not make the paint lose uh, the beauty in the paint. Because if you use hard brush, uh, it, the, the paint will not look fresh as as the way you want. So I use the soft one to do the finishing.
someone is asking when you're putting in these finishing touches, uh, what are you looking for? Uh, what, what are you hoping to add or correct or change about the painting as you're, as you're putting on these details? Yeah. So basically when I'm, when I'm doing the finishing, I don't work on the middle tone light. I work on the, the dark tone and then the light tone to bring the painting out. That is basically what I do when I'm doing the finishing. So all that you have to do is go back all the time to 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 look to to see if it is going the way you want. And once it's going the way you want, that's it.
Can you talk just a little bit about creating uh, the, the focal point and how you're using uh, the light and shadow and the depth of color? Okay. Uh, basically, my focus will be on the face and then the port. The face and the port, that is the, uh, the focal point of the, of the painting because I, I don't focus mostly on, on the clothes that they are wearing, just the faces, because I'm trying to depict a woman working hard back home in Ghana, basically my mother, my grandmother. So I, that is the faces and, and, and the port that they are carrying. That is what I want people to, but that is basically what I'm talking about. So that is what I throw more light on. And one, one other question while I have you interrupted. Are you uh, using a thinning medium with the paints? Uh, the person's just commenting uh, that they look so soft and they're flowing so well. Do you thin the paint? No, uh, I don't do anything to the paint. I just use it as it is.
So for now, my painting is done. Great. So uh, someone uh, is asking, uh, did you always paint with such bold colors? Or how has your painting evolved yeah, or changed? If I'm, if I'm working on, if I'm working on lands, landscape, sometimes it differs. But if I'm working on these type of painting, but basically that is how I do it. I mostly use the bold colors because one thing that uh, I would say my my mentor told me that, hey, Kwame, whenever you are working on a piece, try to bring the painting alive so that if the painting hung in the place for so many years, you will still see the painting as it was. So that is what he taught me, and I think maybe I adjust to it. And since then, I started using the bold colors. So, so even when you were young, when you started, yes. when you were 15, you've always yes. painted with very bold colors. Okay. Other questions from our in-person audience? Have acrylics always been the medium that you use, or do you? Or no, I use only acrylics. Yeah. Back home in Ghana, when I started painting, we didn't have oil. Even to get the, the paint was a bit difficult. So acrylic was what we were used to. So that is why I adjust to acrylic and ever since. Mm -hmm. So so do you dabble in any other mediums? or you just... No. Oh, okay. And, and before you started painting at 15, did you draw or, or were you? Yeah, I used to draw a lot. Even now, I still draw a lot. So as, a, as an artist, you have to, you have to draw almost every day. At least you have to put pencil or, or a pen. If you use a pen to draw or a pencil to draw, you have to do something every day. It helps. Okay, other questions from the audience? Okay, I'll check virtually as well. And then maybe we'll uh, get a, a nice close up of this painting. And then did you want to talk about some of the others that you yeah. brought and some of the other themes that you use? This one is titled Ancestral Protection. Back home, we believe that our people who are not here with us, like our grandfathers who are not here with us physically, spiritually, we believe they are still with us. And they pray for us. They wish us well all the time. So those living are here, and then the ancestors are here. They see us, though we don't see them, but they see us. So we believe they always pray for us. They always wish us well. So the ones on the table there are quite a bit smaller. Do you have a, a versus the one that you did for us that's such a large format? I have them in the studio and on my website. I noticed that maybe it's just my eyesight, but I don't see your signature or your initials. Do you not sign your paintings? Yeah, I sign. It is right here. Is it very tiny? Yes. Okay. And you always put your whole name or just a portrait? No, B, my name is Kwame Buama Mensa. So I use the B for Buama and then the Mensa.
Do, did you want to talk about some of the other paintings that are on the table there? Because we can see them on the screen there. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the different themes and yeah this one is a, a painting that i would say uh mostly it it inspires me like it motivates me a lot you know in life life i use wind to represent uh destruction that sometimes you go through a lot uh in life but once you are focused once you know what you want in life and all that no matter how big the wind will be, or no matter how big the destruction will be, once you know what you want, nothing can defeat you. So that's why I use this as a wind, a big wind in front of us. We may see it as it is, how heavy or how sometimes it is scary sometimes in life, but it can never defeat you once you have your goal your your mind on the on the goal or whatever you want once you have your mind on it can never defeat you so it's one of the piece that uh i always get inspiration from and this one is also one of the warriors This is also one of the warriors. The reason why I, I like painting the warriors is, you know, the Ashanti tribe from Ghana, because our, our, our grandfathers, they were mentally strong because they conquered almost every part of the country. And because they are, they are, they are mentally strong, we, uh, the Akans or the Ashantis from that tribe, we draw inspiration from their courage and, and their determination to, to, to do whatever they wanted to do. So that is why I like painting them because I draw inspiration from their, their, their strength. Yes, someone online said that they look very majestic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And I also have some Chicago uh, cityscapes also here. When I came to the country uh, 2017 and I went to Chicago downtown, it was amazing. Uh, mostly, if you were born with it, you wouldn't see what I saw that time coming all the way from Africa that you have never seen such a, a, a downtown before. And I saw it. I draw close to it and I started painting them. Yeah, could we put maybe some of the canvases that are on the floor there up onto the table okay. so that the folks at home can see those? Thank you. They could, they, the canvas could go on top or uh, just on the table. That would be great. And then I can focus in on them. That's great, thank you so much. So these are the city scenes, the downtown scenes that I added to my, my paintings ever since I came to the country. And someone asks, do you generally use canvas or do you sometimes use a canvas board yeah, I use board and canvas as well. How old were you when you came to Chicago? Uh, 30, I was 38, almost 39. Any other questions from our in-person audience while I'm here? Uh, 
Okay. And any of the other pieces that you'd like to show us and maybe talk about that are there on the table? And this is a market. You know, my mother used to work at a, at a market in Ghana, uh, Kumase. So basically, when I was young, I used to go to the market uh, almost every day after school. So when I started painting, I decided to paint these women uh, at the market. So if you go to my website or if you come to my show, you see those women, market women, painting uh, mostly a lot. Okay, well, I think uh, unless there are other questions, we'll give our audience one more uh, minute or two here to type in any additional questions, or if we think of one uh, from our in-person audience, I'll also uh, at the end here uh, do a, a zoom in to the painting uh, that's, that's finished there. But uh, I will be sending out a follow-up email tonight with a lot of Kwame's uh, contact information as well as that for the DuPage Art League. But we certainly thank you for attending tonight. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder that we record, we're able to record all of these programs and they are on the library's YouTube page so you can watch those at any time. Uh, but with that, I think we'll say uh, thank you, good night, and uh, we Everybody stay safe and healthy. We'll see you again soon.